With a new GLA, Mercedes completes the lineup of the refreshment of its compact cars. Uh, different to the GLB, which is more practical, the GLA should be more the sporty SUV. How sporty it really is, how it drives, what engines you can buy, and what makes our edition one so special, let's find out now. MBUX, so the new Mercedes-Benz user experience, is always on board with the new GLA. But if you want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you have to pay extra. At the base model, you do find two 7-inch screens here in the car, but you can have as the next level 7 and 10.25 inch, or the top version, which we do have, it's uh, two times 10.25 inch under one panel, which gives you a widescreen, which is nice to touch and to work with and very nice to look at. A very important part of MBUX is the new voice control system of Mercedes and that gives me the option to really control the whole car only with my voice. From the front the GLA looks stronger thanks to an additional 3 cm width. The sporty appearance of the 1,83m SUV is also supported by the power domes and the extra 46mm of track width. The grille of our Edition 1, which is based on the AMG line, is flanked by LED high-performance headlights. The standard model, unfortunately, only offers halogen headlamps with LED daytime running lights. The front spoiler with the high-gloss black splitter and the red inserts in the air intakes underline the sporty look of our Limited Edition 1. GLA. Inside of our GLA Edition 1, we do find very nice surfaces. So for instance, we do have leather, we do have soft touch, we do have um, things that look like carbon fiber, for instance, here at the doors, at the dashboard. We do find glossy black stuff, so everything really looks very, very nice. On top of this, to give it the extra kick, we do find this nice red stitching like here, like in the center console or on our steering wheel. And do not forget that we do drive the Edition 1, we find the Edition 1 signature on top of our dashboard as well. In contrast to its predecessor, the new 4.41 meter long GLA is now 14 mm shorter. However, its wheelbase has grown by 30 mm to 2 m 73. Together with an increase in height of around 10 cm, this not only creates a completely new look. There are around 2 cm more headroom for the driver and co-driver. And passengers in the rear can look forward to around 11 cm more space for their legs. The Edition 1 comes on black 20-inch aluminium wheels with red contrasts. The base model only gets 17 inches. To supply the typical SUV look, you will find plastic claddings on the wheel arches and sills. Mercedes says the GLA 250 should take 7.1 liter per 100 km driven in average. During my test drive I used a bit more, so I would say if you drive the car normal up to a bit more sporty, you should expect something about 10. At the rear the wheels stand out particularly well in the broad shoulders. The split taillights, which use LED technology, are now significantly slimmer and underlining the width of the vehicle. And to complete the sporty look there is a new diffuser as well. Something that reminds me of the new GLB are these new door handles inside of the GLA because they look a bit like a, a tube out of metal and this gives the car a bit of the robust SUV look here, the interior. There are two petrol and three diesel engines available for the new GLA. They deliver a power range between 116 up to 224 horsepower. On top there is the sporty version, the GLA 350 AMG, which delivers 306 horsepower and there is a plug-in hybrid available as well, which is the GLA 250E that offers a system output of 218 horsepower. All of the cars come always with an automatic gearbox and most of them are available with all-wheel drive as well. What I really do like is the combination out of the steering and the suspension because the steering is so precise that cornering with that car really makes great fun. And on top of this you get a suspension which is so stiff that it always feels a bit yeah, too good to be an SUV. And on the other hand this is still providing loads and loads of comfort but when you do drive the car quite slow on bad surfaces or bad roads you do may feel the, uh, the bumps a bit more than you may expect it. But this is the price you pay if you want to have a quite sporty SUV. The Mercedes GLA 200 is the current entry-level model of its series. With a basic price of around 37,000 euros in Germany, the 163 horsepower compact SUV is not a bargain. For comparison, a 150 horsepower Audi Q3 is available from 34,400 euros. 
And a BMW X1 with 140 horsepower costs from 33,100 euros. However, the Mercedes always comes with an automatic gearbox. This extra piece of comfort costs 2,100 euros for the BMW and 2,700 euros for the Audi. The space the GLA offers here at the front seats is really, really nice. Even me as a tall person, I do sit absolutely comfortably. I can, yeah, enjoy the drive and this is the same for the co-driver. Regarding to the hat space, I do have some left, but I'm not sure if this is because of the sunroof or it may be better if you don't have the sunroof. You better try this if you are a tall person. Um, how much space there is behind me, we're going to find out that by having a short stop. But before we do that, let's talk about the seats because the sport seats, which we do have in our car, are really nice because they offer loads and loads of comfort. And on top of this, they offer so much support that you can really enjoy cornering quick with that GLA. So let's see if I fit behind me in the GLA. I didn't change my seating position. And I climb in quick because it's cold. As you see, there is enough head headroom. So yeah, I will touch the, um, the, the top, but uh, that works. Um, in front of my knees, I do have about two centimeters. So I would say it works, not for long distance, right? But I'm nearly two meters tall and I do sit behind me. Of course, the new GLA features the most important driver assist and safety systems as standard. But on the other hand, of course, this is a Mercedes, so that means you can configure a lot more than that. And to give you an idea of what the car offers as standard and what is an optional extra, here you find both lists. My Mercedes GLA is featuring the 2-liter 4-cylinder petrol engine that delivers 165 kilowatts or 224 horsepower and a maximum torque of 350 newton meters and that is always combined with an 8-speed automatic gearbox. And this works quite well so the car always features more than enough power but on the other hand it is a bit too nervous. It is a bit too sporty I think for a standard SUV. But on the other hand if you say this one should be the more sporty version compared to a GLB that is something that works well. With the rear seats up the GLA now offers a maximum loading volume of 435 liters. That is 14 liters more than the predecessor. If you fold down the rear bench, a luggage compartment of up to 1,430 litres is created. Nevertheless, the competitors are clearly winning this discipline. The Audi Q3 offers 530 to 1,525 and the BMW X1 505 to 1,550 litres of luggage space. Talking about compartments here in the GLA, you do find standard sizes inside of the doors. I think they will easily fit a one litre bottle. Uh, on top of this here at the center console you do find at the front the optional uh, wireless charging. Uh, behind that you do find two standard cup holders. And then if you go a bit further down the road um, you do find a standard Mercedes splitted armrest and beneath that a normal size of a compartment. Important here there are two USB sockets but both are USB-C. Um, behind this in the center, so the rear seats, you do find another USB-C port and of course you do find the typical cup holders in the armrest of the rear seats as well. That was my test drive with the new Mercedes GLA 250 Formatic Edition 1. What I really do like with the car is the exterior design because it really looks a bit more sporty and of course I like the color and trim. Looking at the interior, the space it offers at the front seats is absolutely gorgeous. On the rear bench there's more than enough space even if you do want to sit behind me. Um, when we talk about the drive of the car, it should be the more sporty version when we compare it with a GLB and it really is. It's a lot stiffer, a lot more agile and something I do not like 100% is the powertrain uh, with this 250 here because it's very agile. So something you may not expect from a SUV but if you like sporty drive that's absolutely fine. But even in comfort mode you will not have a quite an easy drive. You will always find quite high refs. Um, when we talk about the optional list you do find with the car. It features everything you need when you order the base model, but you can have nearly everything when we talk about comfort, when we talk about driver assistance and safety system. And that brings you to a car, which is still a compact car, but features nearly everything you may only find with a lot higher classes. But 
on the other hand, the, the, then we come to the downside of the car because this is the price. The base model of our car here costs you in Germany about 44,000 euros. And if you want to have the edition one and all the extras we do have in our test car, that'll cost you more than 70,000 euros. And I think that's quite a lot of money for a compact car.